Hey all, no wait, you got the right channel. It's Caddis Guy here. We're just doing something a little bit different today. We're rebuilding this old Husqvarna 240 saw from 2013 that was given to us. We're doing it on our dining room table because the lighting's good in here. Saw so has some issues. One of those issues is air leaks. It'll just randomly surge after you've been using it for a while. You get through a cut. It'll keep surging between 5,000 and 6,000 RPM on its own. Chain spinning around. You have to wait for it to calm down. Not cool. Not safe. Clutch is fine. Another issue though is that it was vapor locking. So it would be really hard to start after you've been running it for a while. Completely vapor locked. Now we confirmed the fuel tank vent was clogged. And we were able to unclog that with mass airflow cleaner, but we want to get in there and change the check valve below that. There's this duck build check valve. So we have to figure out how to get in there and replace that too. But we're doing everything. Pretty much every component is getting replaced. I know for $100 more, we could have bought an equivalent new saw, but this way we're going to have a brand new 2013 Husqvarna 240 and a couple hundred dollars worth of spare parts we can swap back in whenever we need. So that's what we're doing here. It's gonna be a fun project. Doing the rebuild video for you now. And in about a week from now, we're going to do another video where we go and fire it up and test it out. If you build it, he will come. Whoa, what was that? All right, so we'll just jump right into it. We got the new, new cylinder housing here. All we've done is clean up the inside a little bit because uh, it came pretty dirty. I wouldn't want to run it like that. This is the old cylinder. Didn't look too bad. Old piston. You can see on the exhaust side there the piston was scoring a little bit. It's, it's actually not too bad. It still holds compression. This is our shiny new piston. Crankshaft looks good. Connecting rod bearing looks looks awesome. So the only thing we're doing with this uh, is we're going to replace these bearing seal assemblies with some new ones. I think the old ones are just fine, but like I said, I want to make this saw uh, like brand new. So yeah, we'll start with uh, we'll start with that here. Here's our new ones. Slide the new ones on. There we go. Now this part's a little bit tricky. This is the worm gear that controls the oiler. I don't know if you can see that little groove there. But it's got to go down into there. So I, I don't have a proper tool for this. The way I got it off was I, I just gently coaxed it out with a flathead screwdriver. It's not the proper way to do it. You should use a puller. But uh, I didn't break it. So I don't think I'll break it putting it back on. I'm just going to take a take a socket. Put it over, over top of this. And uh, give it a little tap just to get it started. Yeah, we don't have proper tools for any of this. That should do it. Okay, perfect. We can see that we've got it past that first uh, first little lip there. So just so you can have a better look at that, I have to slide this worm gear down into, you can see a little groove there. So I'm just gently going to just one at a time, you know, move it a bit down, move that one a bit down, move that one a bit down. Once we, uh, once we get it in that groove there, we're good to go. Trying to be as careful as I can here to, uh, to not scratch anything. Well, that went really well. Got it back on there. It's in the, in the groove. It's a little slot it's supposed to be in. Everything's gapped nice and even there. I even tested engaging it against the oiler. You can see the uh, oiler there. Now I'm just putting a small coating of oil inside the crankcase here. 
don't want to get any of it on the surface where I'm going to have the gasket. Doing the same thing inside the cylinder housing as well, just a tiny bit. I'm going to be a lot more on the on the piston, but this won't hurt. And that's just a little bit of Lucas oil. Crankshaft going back into the crankcase. Now we'll put a little bit of oil on the new piston here as well. Not really too thrilled with this. You can see right here, a little nick in it. And I don't know if it was where they were etching there that they nicked that. I can't feel it with my fingernails, so it's probably going to be okay. So, yeah, we'll lube this up and uh, get the ring on it. Ooh, that's a lot. I'll have to give it a little wipe down after. Hopefully that'll help get our circlips in there. I'm not going to be able to get that on camera, but I don't know if you can see if there's it's like a small groove in there. And uh, we have to get some circlips in there to hold our wrist pin in there. Just wipe off the excess a little bit. Now we're going to get the piston ring on. You can see on the piston there's a little, little pin there. And we want to orient it, orientate this uh, so that these go underneath that. Uh oh. There we go. Sorry you didn't see that. That all snapped into place there. Next, we're going to install one of these little circlips. We'll do it on the more difficult side. Put it on that side. This part I won't be able to film, sorry. We got one in there. It's a little arrow there that says exhaust. So when we go to install this over onto the connecting rod here, that we need to make sure the exhaust goes toward the exhaust side of the saw. Yo, got that in there. That's done. So now I'm going to try and struggle with that other clip. Be right back. Fought with that one for a good while. Found it easier just to take out the whole assembly. There we go. The next step here will be to uh, put some gasket on this. Well, we're using Loctite 518. I know there's better things out there, but it's uh, what I have to work with. So I, I'm just going to do the gasket off camera. You don't want to sit around and watch me do that. So I'll show it to you when it's done, though. What do you think, guys? Yeah, I know. I'm not good at this. But I think it'll work. Yeah, definitely don't want to get this one wrong. I have to tear apart the whole saw again. I think it'll be all right. All right, let's get this thing ready to go. So I think what I want to do is start, as soon as I get it to start to slide down onto the piston, I'm going to turn it on its side, get a bolt through there, start lining it up, then just sort of ease it down onto the bolts. I don't know. Well, let's try and get this thing on here. And hopefully we don't have to fight with it too much. I'm taking it back out. I'm just going to try and get it started on the outside of the saw. Oh, 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 there we go. Yeah, everything's all lined up inside there. Okay, now let's just check over our gasket, make sure it still looks reasonable. Sorry guys, missed a little bit of footage there. Last you saw me, I I think I was struggling trying to get the piston and piston ring inside of the housing. That went in and after that the card filled up on the camera and the battery died shortly after that. Uh, I had gasket and everything ready to go. So I didn't want to run around changing batteries. I, I just mounted the uh, cylinder housing there on the crankcase and bolted it in from the bottom. You didn't miss anything other than that. So next we have to install the flywheel. Actually clean this up really good. 
It's been uh, about 24 hours since I was filming here last. I figured I'd let the gasket dry because what I'm going to have to do is block the uh, piston and uh, tighten this on really good. I don't think it would have disturbed the gasket if I did this yesterday, but well, here we are. So you can see in the flywheel there's a, there's a key there that needs to go into a little notch there on the crankshaft. So flywheel into the notch. We'll know when we get it in the notch because now it's you can tell it's turning the crankshaft there. Next we're going to lock the piston. We're just going to use a little piece of a uh, little piece of rope for that. Put it through the spark plug hole. Have to be a little bit careful doing this. Okay, there we are. Okay, see if I can triple it up. We don't want to shear anything. We don't want to. We want don't want to have it go all the way through to the exhaust or anything like that. Just stick that in there. See if we get it to stop turning. There, it stopped turning now, and hopefully, hopefully that's enough for us to torque this down to 20 foot pounds. First, we put the flywheel on. Uh, then we have to put this washer on, and this needs to go edge down. And we put our nut down there. Grab our torque wrench. Slow and steady wins the race. Oh, it's getting close. There we go. We have confirmed click. Now we're going to turn it around. And it's time for the sprocket and clutch. Here's our old sprocket. It's a little bit chewed up, but... I mean, it's totally fine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep this. Uh, like most of the things coming off of this, I'm going to keep his spares to swap back in. Same deal with the clutch. Clutch seems great. We're gonna reuse the washers. That came off of there. And unpackage our new sprocket. New sprocket and our new clutch. Yeah, we're making this thing new. Have a lot of spare parts left over. And this has got the uh, well, I was gonna say built in, but it looks like pressed in needle bearing. It's pre greased and everything like that. I put a little bit of oil there, that's about it. clutch. Now with this it is ready loosey lefty tighty so we're we're going left. There we go. I know what you're thinking. He forgot to screw in the oiler sealer there. But I was just testing to see if you guys noticed that I forgot to, yeah, I forgot. Nope. And we'll take this opportunity to uh, put a little bit of grease on this. Put some on the crankshaft there. So this is the same way I removed the clutch, very carefully, you don't want to wreck anything. You don't have to get this super tight either because uh, when you're running it with the chain on it's going to be tightening itself, so just give it a little, a little tightening there. 
And I should have mentioned that when I took the flywheel off there, after you get the, the nut out, this thing's still tapered on really good. So if you don't have a puller, what you can do is just put the screw back on, but just before the uh, threading there, give it a little, give it a couple wax with, uh, you can just put a socket over it, give it a couple taps. If it doesn't come off, then you probably want to get a puller. You don't want to, you don't want to wreck the threading on your crankshaft or wreck your flywheel. You don't need our piston block here anymore. Just move the piston down. Yoink. There we go. So now this can all move freely. All right, before this starts looking too much like a saw, I want to address the fuel tank situation here. Took you guys off the tripod so you can have a better look at it. That thing's gotta go. We're, we have to get in there to replace the duckbill valve, so we're gonna find a way to get that out. All right, I think I figured out how we're going to deal with that fuel tank vent situation. So the first step, first step is to put some shop towels into the intake and spark plug holes in the cylinder there. Next step, uh, I think we'll remove this uh, primer bubble. So we'll just pinch that. Come on, get it out of there. There we go. Primer bubble removed. Oh no, it came out. Step two. So I got a screw into it, a few threads. What do you think? Do you think it'll come out? <clears throat> oh, it's in there good. That's a good sign. keep messing around here and uh, I'll get back to you let you know how it goes all right after a lot of fighting trying to drill that out and I was able to squeeze the duckbill valve through there and maybe you can maybe we can see it together on the bottom of the tank here okay we're looking inside the tank there we go you can see the duckbill valve back in there so that worked out I mean pretty much perfectly. I, I don't know what's been done to this saw before. I, I could tell someone's been in here before me. I don't know if someone put in a new vent and they super glued it in or something. I, I wasn't able to drill the whole thing out. I, I was risking damaging stuff. I, I mean, at least with the, the time that I'm willing to spend on this, but got enough off to snake that through, sitting where it should sit, I think. It's a little bit of the old vent on there but the the new one fits on top of it just perfectly that old one i mean it's pretty clean now from sucking mass air sensor cleaner through it so i like how the new one just kind of rests on top of that and and uh, it's flush all right this is our new fuel tank vent looks like a little little tiny hockey puck so here we go he shoots he scores and now, now I'm going to do, I'm going to mix up some JB Quick Weld, do a little perimeter around that, and we'll, we'll check back with you. So there's our new vent. I like the way that turned out. It doesn't move at all, it's sealed. Nice and secure. I'd call that one a victory there. I won! <laughs> cool. No reason not to reinstall the 
ignition module now. Well, there we go. What do, what do y'all think of that? Uh, looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that's about a business card there. You can feel a little bit of tension on it, but it still slips through. I do realize that I'll need to undo this to hook up the ground to. Um, I don't think it will change the timing or position, but we'll check it again after. Next up, let's try to do some fuel lines. Let's just take this right out of here. To filter out, well actually we're just gonna we're just gonna pull the whole line out. Right about the same size. This one's a bit longer. They uh, have a little edge on there, I guess, to help you get through the, the grommet. So we'll put it down through the grommet this way. Wow, that's, man, that's loose. You know what? I don't know if that grommet needs to be replaced, but I don't think that that's not going to hold a seal. So, yeah, yeah. We're going to reuse this one. I guess it's a little bit thicker line. Yeah, that's just not happening. Put this back, this end back through the grommet. Yeah, that's better. See, that actually fits. Put the fuel filter back in. Yay, I found it. My nipple. I thought I lost my nipple. Yeah. So we'll put this down through here. Oh yeah. Nice and tight. I'm going to make the incision right here. There we go, return line. Pulled that through. Put in the little nipple there and we're gonna pull it back through the other way and hopefully it seats good. Ding! On to the next piece here. This is our, our intake. And just gonna put the new gasket on here before we do that. We have to slide on our little bolts there that the carburetor goes into. Put the gasket on carefully. Right. That looks good to me. What about you? Nice. And We're going to put our boot back on it. Yeah, yeah, come on. Cooperate. Yeah. 
There we go. Almost. Come on. Little flap. Okay, I'm just gonna take it off and try again. There we go. Okay, let's clip into here. Why is that not lining up? There we go. Um, what do you all think? I think that looks good to me. Yep. Good to go. Fit it in here. All right, putting on the gasket now for the new shiny OEM carburetor. Like I said, we're making this thing new right here. You know, I've seen a lot of videos of people put oil or, you know, some kind of extra gasket maker type material on either side of these things. I don't think that's necessary, but I'd love to hear what you guys uh, think about that new carburetor comes with shiny new primer bulb that's cool I mean I'm not really running out of primer bulbs or fuel lines or anything like that anytime soon there didn't want to rough up the line but no issue there should just click right into place Primer ball test. Yeah. That's the fun of disassembling something and reassembling it a few months later once their parts finally arrive. 2022 problems. What's this one anyway? Looks like a T15. Is it lined up? Yeah, it's lined up. Let's see if I was right about the T15. Of course I was right. See, the saw's probably not going to blow up. Unless I'm forgetting something. Wait a minute. Hold on. Cut. Oh, maybe that is supposed to go through there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> See? You guys thought I was making a mistake, but I was just checking to make sure that you were paying attention so we don't do anything bad. All right, time to hook up some fuel lines. So this is coming from the tank. It's going into the bottom of the carburetor. Felt like it went on easy. Yeah, no, that's no good. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this fuel line because it's all stretched. One line I wasn't thinking I was gonna have to replace. Because I replaced it not long ago. Come on, yeah, don't do that to it. Got excited there. All right. So, hey, that's how we change a fuel filter. Sort of. You go find some more line. I'll be right back. Look what you made me do.
Wasn't too happy about not being able to use the uh, OEM lines in here, eh? Um, I think what's happened is, like, I ordered the lines for, uh, I think it was between 2008 and 2014. After 2014, they used something different, but I think at some point in time, this saw was serviced, and they used a different size fuel line, and they changed the grommet there. So, so I'm just using these other generic possibly correct size lines there we go snap our filter back in there see everything fits snug now nice and snug like make sure that that's all still hooked up good there, there. it's easier to pull back through the top because now I have too much so yeah we're going to stick it down there in the bottom right corner now I need to pull just enough back out to hook onto the carburetor and pull as I go. I heard the fuel filter shift down there. I hear cats fighting outside. You're on YouTube now, cats. You hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. It's hilarious. I don't like. I don't like that. Yeah, I like. I like that. I like that. I like it a lot. Okay. Nothing's getting pinched. Uh, and this one, I can. Looks like I can shorten that up. I think I can anyway. If I find out differently, I have more fuel line. That is super tight. Oh, there we go. And we're back. I found the parts I needed. Hopefully I can get them in without having to pull out any fuel lines or anything. So there's our throttle linkage. Ew. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's all hooked in now. Pop in the choke. Do it from here. Oh, please, please. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Throttle lever. 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 You tell me. Just in case I didn't get that in frame. Hopefully, you can see the orientation of everything there and, and like I keep saying throughout this whole video don't take my word it's just how I think it goes if you see me doing anything horribly wrong and unsafe here you let me know you're the experts YouTube so the the choke goes directly underneath the kill switch there not there but here right yeah. Trying not to get in your way. This came from a kit that I bought on Amazon. It wasn't fitted correctly. I had to cut it down to size. I think it'll be all right. What do you think? Ooh, I'm missing stuff. Eh. <laughs> See, you guys, again, you thought I forgot I was just testing you to see if you were paying attention. I think that's the same thing we used for the uh, mounting bolts for the cylinder there. Again, not too tight because plastic. All right, we cool? I'm cool. I'm cool if you're cool. Back to air filter. I'm 
Now we'll hook up the ignition module and uh, we'll double check the gap when we're done that. There we go. Oh yeah. yeah, there's a gap with the magnets there. Oh yeah, I'd say that's perfect. What do you all think? You guys are the professionals. I'm just entertainment here. Awesome. And... There we go. Perfect. Bezel here thing. <laughs> like, oh, I forgot a part. It's like uh, Ikea. You're going to have parts left over later. Yeah, that's not work, dude, here. Okay. That's good. Boom. Okay, perfect. That's totally what we want to hear. Sounds good and strong. I found another easy win before we start messing with handles and such. Throttle linkage. Goes through there. Yeah, we're doing exhaust now. Put some screws through there. Screws in. Sorry, I was out of frame, wasn't I? Can you see me now? Get in there. Okay. Gasket. Heat shield. Installation complete. And uh, then we have this exhaust screen. Obviously, yeah, I guess we can't put that on now. I, let's go ahead and fire this thing in here. And yes, there are better tools for this. Wait till you see what I do to tighten it at the end. There are methods to my madness. With all due respect, sir, I see no methods. Did you get that one? You know where that came from? Bet this will work. Yeah. Thank goodness I realized the battery was dying there. You guys wouldn't have been able to see the exhaust screen getting put back in here. Eh. Yeah, it's not too bad. There we go. We'll not hear. Spark plug, not too bad. Champion. Gap still looks good. It's the one that was in there before. It's fine. It's fine. So. Let's put on the top cover. I thought I was recording. Recording for real. All right, let's start that again. You don't want to miss this. This is exciting stuff. We're putting the cover back on. And the cover has this fancy tachometer taped on with 3M tape, double-sided. Then I found all my screws labeled top. Snug. Snug. Ooh. Oh, it's looking like a saw. Cool. I like it. 
I feel like I'm doing one of those prize showcases for The Price is Right or something. Ding! Love the sound clutches make. So yeah, I don't know. What do you guys all think of that? When you have the friction plate in there, there's like, I don't know, half a millimeter, maybe a millimeter of play without the friction plate in there. There's there's no play. Is that as designed? Like, I maybe someone who understands more about how a clutch works and that does how that design of clutch works i could check my other side we, we have a 445 e mark ii but it could be a different clutch design so i don't want to i want to go down any rabbit holes chase any red herrings my other concern is at some point the grommet was changed in there and that grommet is for a new newer model of saw and i bought older fuel lines and they didn't fit at all so i used generic fuel lines that were <laughs> seemed about the right diameter but inside diameter is different than outside diameter i mean i would think that if they have different size inside diameters based on the year that you know the carb doesn't really only so much is going to go into the carb it doesn't matter how much how fast it can suck it up as long as it's reasonable so i don't know that that changes anything but i'd really like to know that about the fuel lines and if inside diameter really makes a ton of difference uh, if so how and why i would like to yeah i'd like to know about that play and i mean that's about it unless you guys see me do anything horribly wrong and this is going to blow up on me i don't think it will i don't think that loctite 518 job was good i hope it lasts a little bit but that's that's one of the things i figure i'll have to redo that at, at some point i just hope it's later than sooner uh anyway getting back to it let's get the handle on that's what we'll do let's get a handle on it oh Nope, found more stuff to do before I do that. Ha. I'm going to keep finding more stuff to do and keep avoiding that handle. There we go. Ha. Ooh, more handle parts. Linkages, levers, levers. Fully cooked chicken. Got to check on dinner. Dear rib roll. All right, it's the next day here. We're putting the handle back on. We're getting this finished up once and for all. Looks about right. Okay. Everything's lined up there, but we're gonna have to turn it around so you can see the next part of this. our grip safety so you can't press the trigger trigger mechanism won't work unless you're pushing that down and that's something you'll want to test before you commit to to fully putting this back together um, and hook this on to our little throttle wire there I don't know if you can see this little wire here this little plastic nub coming out of there you want to get it on the outside of that so you might have to fiddle around with that a little bit just to make it so that, you know, you pull down the grip safety and you can pull the trigger. If you don't pull down the grip safety, you can't pull down the trigger. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and put the uh, other side of the handle on there. We'll test it again after we tighten this down okay it's working as it should if i pull this out push it back in we should hear a click here there, now we'll go ahead and put in those anti-vibration screws and then we're almost done here. And yeah, of course I'm gonna throw in a bar and chain and I'm not gonna be firing it up on this video. I'd actually like to 
see your comments before I fire it up. Okay, first test the trigger, feels good, does it trigger without the grip safety, nope, cool, alright, um, and we want it to click, if we pull out the choke, push it back in, does it click, yeah it does, okay, perfect. Okay, we'll do this now. We'll do this now. I'm not going to do this much. Because there's not much lubricating the, the piston, right? We have a spark plug in there, but we only have a thin layer of Lucas oil. This is... I want to say... <laughs> anyway. Um, don't do what I do. This is an uh, entertainment video. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so there's serious compression going on in there. Makes a good gurgle, a good burp or whatever, but I don't want to mess around with that. We'll have another video coming out really soon where we actually fire this up, but I'm going to get this video up on the YouTube. You guys can tell me all how I did there. If, you know, if someone says, hey, don't, don't, uh, don't fire that up. It's going to blow up. Um, I, I will, I will consider uh, your, your comments. Let's, uh, let's put a bar and a chain on this for show. Maybe pull out another saw or something. I don't know. We'll have some fun. And we actually forgot to check that our chain brake is <laughs> working correctly. So yeah, chain spins, cool, chain brake, no more spin. So yeah, we got it. All right, 240 rebuilt here. We're gonna wrap this up real soon. We're going to fire up the 240 on a video coming soon so you can see how this all worked out. You can see my 445E Mark II there in the background. I'm just going to clean that up, clean the filter and stuff like that. Oh, well, that's it for now. 240 rebuild. It's good to go here. Uh, I, I will I will post up how this thing runs. I think it'll flash out right away and run like a beast. Well, as, as much as much of a beast as a 240 with a what was it 38cc uh, engine can be. I know this is a deviation from what we normally do here on our YouTube. Normally we're running around chasing bears and deers and shooting grouse and fishing, cray fishing, stuff like that. But yeah, if you, if you want to see more of these kind of videos on, on chainsaws, I, I, I just thought I'd film this and uh, I, I don't know if you all like it or not. But if you like it, let us know. We'll do more of it. Take care. Be well.